I want you guys to stop it. It is dangerous, it is life threatening. The best way to prepare for your maths and add maths is, I would say that is the perfect workbook. <laughs> Yo, it is Tani, welcome to my channel. So before we dive into this topic, I need to tell you that this is not a clickbait. I get C in my maths, I'm not proud of it, and neither am I ashamed of it. So your teacher was ashamed of you. Look, failing in the exam doesn't mean that you are the worst person in the world, you don't deserve living. It just means us making a new discovery on one of the ways that doesn't work, like Thomas Edison said. Wait, was it Thomas Edison or Albert Einstein? It's okay. I will check it out and subscribe if you want to know about it. So this video will be divided into why I failed the exam because I know there are plenty of people still doing this and I want you guys to stop it. It is dangerous, it is life-threatening. Second is the secret weapon that leads me to become one of the top scholar in my next exam. And third one, a little debate over attending tuitions or doing your own workbook. And fourth one, how to choose the best workbook for maths and maths. And last but not least, what should you do on the test day? So let's get into it. I feel your what I did is that I prepared for my exam by studying maths and at maths. <gasps> Seriously, what the f are you doing? I was too young and too naive, thinking that I can score well in the exam just by memorizing the formula and looking at my password. And then I just went to bed happily and confidently, thinking that I'm going to beat the exam tomorrow. And <laughs> it proved me wrong. Okay, class, put that with food. Listen. Maths and MS are not to be studied. The best way to prepare for your maths and MS is to attempt the questions itself. As the curriculum progresses, it is completely normal for us to forget about the earlier topics. Before exam to refresh your memory, we have to attempt the questions instead of open the book, staring at the formula, looking at our past solutions and assuming that we know how to solve it on the test day. There's no shortcut, there's no other way around. Just do it! This is how you wire your brain so that it is able to think mathematically like twist and turn with the questions to get to the final answer. Otherwise, your brain is too rusty and you know, you just don't know what formula to use and you, you are unsure of everything. Literally everything. But the thing is, there are too lot of questions and it is depressing to even think about it. So this leads to my secret weapon about what practice question you should choose to prepare for your exam. My heart's on lock, yeah, you got the key. I have my own question bank which I collected from my homework or workbook. In daily life, wherever I encounter with the questions that I can answer, the difficulty level is 5 out of 5. I will mark the answer or highlight it. After having a headache with it, I will go to my genius like friends or teachers to ask for the solutions. Of course, most of the time it will be my friends it's because I'm just too shy to raise a hand and ask a question in a class. <laughs> After that, I will write the solution beside. And voila, here's my precious little cutie. I don't know what else to describe. Um, most important, question back. I'm not going to step into the exam hall until I do them, I dissect them from head to toes. The question bank you have to create on your own because the difficulty level for each question, it differs from one person to another person. The questions that you feel is hard may be just a peanut to others. But it is completely okay. We have our own pace, so don't compare to others. Compare with yourself, making small improvement day by day and you become a better man. That's more than enough. You deserve a celebration, you deserve a pat on the shoulder, and you deserve a tea life for the day. Okay. Did I just trigger something? Assuming that you are doing your homework given by your teacher, but still you do need some extra exercise. And you can get it either by attending tuition, blah, 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 attending tuitions or buying your own workbook. It depends on what kind of person you are. If you are the kind of person that can't help slouching on the sofa Slouch when you're homebound and you just need somebody to kick your butt so that you can keep moving, I strongly recommend you to attend tuition class. But if you are motivated enough to do your own work and checking your answers and also looking for somebody to teach you, like your friends or your school teacher, it is totally fine 
to buy your own workbook and then follow your own pace. I attend MS students in Volume 4 because this is what my peers did and everyone is doing this so it is a bit insecure if I didn't do it but after that I realized that I can do it on my own so I just stopped going to tuitions and start my own workbook. On a side note, if you guys happen to be the one who teach, do it wholeheartedly because research shows that you learn more through learning by teaching. Exercise book that you choose shouldn't be too easy or too hard. If you are picking a book which is way too easy, it is taking your time and yet you are learning little from them so it is not cost effective. On the other hand, if you pick a workbook which is too hard, you are inviting some headache and you are overwhelming yourself with unnecessary information. So, unless you want to become a mathematician, I have been solely responsible for this university's six loop quantum gravity calculation. I recommend you to start with a workbook which is at the intermediate level, where most of the questions, the difficulty level, falls between three or four out of five, and few of the questions can be five out of five. I would say that is the perfect workbook. So learn from that workbook and pick up the speed in solving the solution. Got a degree, yeah. Look, baby, I'm the spit. On the test day, skip the questions that you don't know. I know this is very obvious. I know this is a everyone knows fact, but I knew it and I did it. Yeah. Because you know what? On the test day, the first few questions are hard questions. So in my first question, I was like, ah, it's okay. I don't know how to do it, and I just skip to the second question. And the second questions, I can't answer as well. So I started to have those thoughts like, am I the dumbest person in the world? Am I not preparing enough for my exam? And blah, 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 blah. It is eroding my confidence to continue to answer the question. It is taking away my time because a lot of negativity just blooms. And that's how I feel. I wish there was somebody telling me it's okay to skip one question after another. I didn't cry. It just makes some tears to come up. <laughs> when you encounter the same situations like me, what you need to do is just swear and skip to the next questions. After you finish all the questions, go back to the questions that you can't answer. Try again. And if it didn't work out, let it be. Go to the other answered questions and do double checking because when you can't answer one question, it doesn't make you fail and it doesn't prevent you from getting an A plus in the exam so it's okay you have tried your best and that is more than enough that concludes how I went from C to A plus in maths and also arts I hope the best for you and thanks for watching and bearing with me feel free to like and comment below and subscribe if you don't want to miss my next video on study tips and study motivation see you in my next video bye